Hey, good morning, Moms and Master Bucks. I hope you had a fantastic week. Um, this morning, I just I woke up feeling that it was important to um, give some encouragement, right? Uh, this time of year, it seems like um, a lot of us, you know, the holidays are coming. We've been at this now for about two months of homeschooling, two to three months. And, and the first round, so to speak, is over. Uh, we've taken some blows. We've lost a little momentum. We've had some good blows we delivered, but at the same time, maybe just a little bit of encouragement. So um, earlier this year, uh, well, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. I'm about to turn 50, and, and we live in an area near Branson, Missouri, where we have a lot of older people. And uh, those, uh, when, when we go to different events and that, I'll see these older people and I'll be like, the thing that keeps going through my head is, remember when, when we were beautiful, like what happened to us? What, what is this that's happening? And so I've decided, hey, this year I'm making commitment. I'm not going to go down without a fight, right? I'm going to um, be in shape. I'm going to stay physical. I'm going to change some of my eating habits. Um, those types of things. So earlier in the year, I found a exercise machine that um, the Max Trainer, that the commercial was amazing. It was like 15 minutes a day. Um, it, it worked your upper body. It worked your core. It worked your legs. It was it was an unbelievable thing. And the 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 specimen that was on this machine, he was just brilliant. He looked like something out of. Um, uh, you know, the gladiators, right? And so I, I tested this. I did research on it. I watched videos on it. Finally, I started doing the searching for it. And, and I found uh, the perfect trainer. And, and it was three hours away. So I got my, my son and we made a commitment. We drove three hours to Tulsa, Oklahoma. We picked it up. We brought it home. We, we spent time. We, it was used. So we cleaned it all up, got it all in place. I prepared an area in the house for it. I mean, this whole process was just exciting. Got it all set up. I tried it. I couldn't do three minutes and then I needed a 20 minute nap. And uh, I mean, the thing kicked my butt the first the first time on it and and now after two weeks i'm finally up to the 15 minute mark i won't say it's it's pretty at all but i've made it at least a little bit in in that process well part of um part of that concept goes along a lot with homeschooling we see it we see it in in january february everybody starts getting excited about buying curriculum shopping curriculum what's working and we kind of have that rush of of good feeling as we're on the hunt for new curriculum and new solutions and we shop for it we talk we do a lot of the research we have big ideas of what everything's going to look like when we start school and then, then we bring it in, we get our school rooms all set up, and it's going to be the best year ever. We have our curriculum right. And then the first three minutes um, just kicks our butt as we realize we're still dealing with the same kids, the same environment, the same us, and, and we have to work through this. And so this morning as I, as I caught a glimpse of myself, uh, realizing that even though I've made it to the 15 minutes on the machine, um, on the exercise machine, I'm, I'm still not that amazing specimen that was promised in the original commercial. And I have to put some faith into that, that, that if, as long as I keep it up and I'm committed to it, and I'm, I'm also, I, you know, failure is not an option in this, that I'm going to persevere. Um, I have to believe that I'm going to become a much healthier person. Maybe I won't be that individual, but it, I'm going to be a healthier person. So using that analogy, putting it forward into the homeschool arena for a lot of us, you're, you've, we bought the curriculum, we got the school set up, we're, we're in the first couple of months, and things begin to just kind of fall apart a little bit. They begin to become a struggle. Can I encourage you, number one, right? It's never too late for resets. We reset all the time. 
we we just did a reset we, it's our second reset of the year and now when i say reset they're not hard resets they're just let's get back to the way we committed let's get back to the schedule you know life got crazy for a week or a flu happened or something like that and we just hey as a family it's time to get back to a reset and, and reorder things to a way that works i'm going to use the fight analogy quite a bit here in the fight analogy, when we come out, right, we've prepared for the fight, we come out and we do the fight, um, but in that, in that place, maybe we realize this guy's prepared or he's throwing a right hook that I wasn't prepared for, and so we have to adjust our game. That's natural and that's normal, and so don't feel bad because you adjust your game. Things are changing. Here's the other thing. We deal with little creatures that are also changing. Like they get they're they're developing hormonally and and intellectually so it's not one size fits all it, in fact throughout the course of a year if you're dealing with a tween or a young teenager who who is developing um the hormone set right if, if there's some testosterone beginning to flow um, or estrogen beginning to flow, that's going to be a whole game changer mid-course, and it can fluctuate from day to day. It's not even a guarantee that every day is going to be the same. So you got to give yourself some room to say, you know, we're not exactly dealing with sane creatures all the time. Uh, this isn't a constant, a given. We, we have to give ourselves some room for that. So um, Four things that I would like to say is encouragement to you. So imagine, if you will, you fought your first round. You're sitting down on the bench, right? It's the Rocky moment. So please hear the eye of the tiger playing in the background. Um, and, and these are the four things that I would say to you before you get ready to go out to the next round. Number one, you have an important job that you are doing. You are raising world changers. This is not a passive activity that you're doing as home educators. This is a remnant generation. This is a group of people that God has set aside. He's setting them aside for a time such as this. These kids are going to face challenges in our culture we didn't face. And we are helping to prepare them for those challenges. When, when you look at, at what's going on in culture and the way that we're moving, I'm so excited. We got to be in a meeting with, with somebody that's second generation homeschool and I'm listening and I'm hearing her communicate her ideas and she's so articulate in the way she's communicating. And I just know that, that you know, it, the, the process of being homeschooled and, and having that environment and that access to ideas and, and, and whatnot has gone into her background. And as she's beginning to communicate to people and she's beginning to burst out of this millennial bubble to become an influencer in the culture that she was designed for, um, it's so exciting. So you are preparing world changers. And that is a spiritual calling. So I would like to encourage you that if you are involved in a spiritual calling, that you are involved in raising up and discipling world changers, you are most likely going to face resistance. Now, I believe that if the Lord has called us to that, that we have the ability and the privilege of calling on, on the name of Jesus and saying, you know, I, I don't, I'm not accepting for my family um, defeat because we have been called to this and I believe that he is going to give us everything we need. But because it is a spiritual um, calling, we need spiritual wisdom. And so in your homeschool, if you're not asking the Lord for wisdom, asking the Lord for favor and strength and discernment, then may I encourage you to please do that because this is not a passive activity. This is not a walk in the park. This is a spiritual call. So number one, it's spiritual. Understand that resistance is to be expected, but we've been promised the tools and equipment that we need to do the calls that we're called to. And, and, um, but please do that. So that's number one. Number two, learning is a journey. It's not an event. So there are going to be days that I get on my trainer. I'll go back to the trainer and it just works better, right? The music that's playing in the background, I just felt more motivated. I was more energetic. That's a win. Then there are days where it just was extremely painful and I can't believe that I want to live another moment. 
okay, so that wasn't the win, but I keep moving forward and I'm making progress. Even the bad days give us opportunities to adjust our game, give us opportunities to look for um, how to do what we do better. And so it's not failure. Like we need to get out of the mindset. The mommy shame game doesn't work for homeschool. It's, it's, a, it's a bad substitute for motivation. This is, this is a, hey, we're on a mission here. Learning is a journey. I'm discipling my kids for the long game, not for today. So, so my kid can't write today. That's, it doesn't have to write today. We will work on this because I've got 10 years or five years or one year, right? I've got time to get this done. It doesn't all have to be done in a day. So number two, it's a journey. Number one, it's spiritual. Number two, this is a journey. Treat it like a journey, right? When I go on a family trip, I like to put my family in the car. I like to feed them real salty foods. Um, and and Kristen won't let me put them in um, – pull-ups because that's apparently embarrassing for 18 year olds but I like to just be there and I drive my family nuts because I'm like I don't care that it's a 14 hour journey we don't need to stop for gas more than once and everybody can just deal with it but but that's not the healthy way to do a trip so they appreciate that I'm getting older because we make more stops and um and and we actually are having a better time when we travel we'll look at homeschooling the same way it's, it doesn't all have to be done today. You've got tomorrow, a month, years, right? We can do this over the period of time. So um, it's great when we have wins that are today, but give yourself some room for that. Number three, and this is, this is a difficulty for our generations. Um, <clears throat> it's going to take work. We love to have solutions that are um, you know, we like fast food. The problem with fast food is there's a consequence to it, right? It's not all that it promises to be. And, and even though I want to have solutions that are, everything is done for me, prepared, I plug it in, it plays, my life is better. It's not healthy. Even in nature, we see things have to struggle a little bit to survive, right? When the chick breaks out of the egg, if I crack the egg, when Kristen does chickens and, and, and she has these chicks in the incubator, I just want to break that egg open for this chick. And I, I want to make it easy for them because I hate to see that struggle. The problem is we have a, a society that's getting used to not having any struggle and not having any difficulty, and it's not necessarily healthy. Well, same with homeschooling. It's not it's not easy. I don't think it's supposed to be easy. It's parenting. It's discipleship. It's like marriage. It's just not always going to be easy. Even though I would like it to be, it's the struggle. It's the difficulty that makes us stronger, that prepares us for bigger challenges and bigger opportunities. And so, well, homeschooling today may be difficult. Maybe we had a meltdown and maybe I wasn't the best person I wanted to be with my kids. And maybe I think they're just little creeps today. Um, even in that, it still gives me the opportunities to reset, to find my game, to understand that um, failure is not an option, right? And get tough with this, right? Don't surrender to public school is not an option. It's not something I'm going to do or farming my kid out to somebody else isn't something I'm going to do. I'm a homeschool parent, doc, on it, and I'm, I'm strong enough to do this. The world needs my children. That's 100% true. The world needs my children. And I am not going to fail the world or the kingdom of God, for that matter, um, because I had a bad day. And I'm going to pick myself up, and I'm going to figure this out. What's the difference between a pit bull and a homeschool mom? Lipstick, right? I mean, just get a mindset that I am tougher than this. I am doing this not because it was easy. I'm doing it because it's needed. I'm doing it because it's my calling. I'm doing it because I'm tough enough to do this. And, and each of you that are doing this, if God has called you to this, if he has placed the burden of home education on your family and, and on your heart, then yes, you can do it. Ask him for strength. Ask him for wisdom. Ask him for the courage. Ask him for favor because scripture says he will give us the tools that we need to accomplish the call that we have. But don't 
Don't surrender because it's difficult. Get tough. You can do this. Okay, that's number three. Number four, it's going to take a little bit of faith. When we started homeschooling back in 1996, I remember just thinking, I sure hope this experiment works. I really hope that we don't just completely screw up our family. Well, now I've graduated five. This is awesome. Aubrey is um, calling in because that's kind of the tradition that we do. So, um, all right. So <clears throat> I, I now that we've graduated five and I get to see my kids beginning to interact with culture, I am so um, excited for you because I realize that what you're doing even though you don't possibly see that this is going to work out good, what is happening is, is these kids, you're planting seeds and you're preparing them and, and, and it's going to pay off. It's like me getting on this exercise machine three weeks in or two weeks in, as I look in the mirror, I'm not really seeing the results here, but I'm trusting that everything I've seen from the people who have used this machine and didn't give up to the difficulty of using this machine, that it actually began to pay off for them and they began to see their arm strengthening, their core strengthened, their leg strengthened, they built their endurance. And even though it wasn't the end all, there were a lot of things that go into it, there, the benefits are paying off. So I'm having to, to kick over to the faith side and say, Okay, today I can't see the wind, but I believe it's coming. I believe if I continue with this and I press on, it's coming. So let me tell you, as a homeschool parent who's been involved for 20 years, graduated five students, seen countless other kids from, from the homeschool movement graduate and hit culture, it is worth it. This momentary affliction, this momentary punch to the face or the pain that you're feeling or, or the challenge that you're experiencing, this is temporary. These these things, you know, there were days we'd we'd come home and and you know mom is locked in the in the closet or the bathroom and she's not coming out and the kids are taking over everything. That was just part of life. That's part of the culture, right? Because there are days that this happens, but there are also days that we do get to reap an amazing harvest. If you know, don't grow weary in well doing, for in due season we'll reap if we faint not. And this is what my encouragement is to you. Today, even if you can't see it, kick over to the faith side that there are those who've gone before you that are telling you, if you press on, if you endure, if you get tough, if you refuse to surrender, you are going to reap an amazing harvest when your children rise up. And, and you know, now as I get to see my children in being married, and having kids, and I'm watching how they hold themselves, I couldn't be prouder of them, and I couldn't be more thankful that the Lord had given us the opportunity to walk the more difficult path of having to stay connected and stay in the battle with my kids, um, because not only are they healthier, but I'm healthier. If I, had, if I had given over my right and my responsibility as a parent to somebody else and farmed it out to somebody who gets paid to do that um, and allowed my, the, the importance of planting seeds and discipleship to them, if I had done that, I wouldn't have had to challenge my own issues. I could have, the, the things that rise up in me as I'm parenting and, and going through those things. So I am such a blessed man because for 20 years I've been part of this movement. I've seen the blessings of it, but it has also changed me. Um, I would not be anywhere near who I am, not that I've arrived, but I wouldn't be anywhere near who I am if it had not been for being part of the struggle and the blessing of homeschooling. So number one, this is a spiritual calling. Expect resistance, but also Pray for and expect the spiritual reinforcement that you are promised. Number two, this is a journey, not an event. Prepare yourself. Give yourself room for growth. Give yourself um, room to build in endurance. And also give your children room for growth too. They're having to endure you today. And, and while I realize as a parent that I'm almost perfect none of the time, 
my kids have had to endure a lot. And many times I have to go back to my kids and say, okay, today it was me, my bad. Let's do this right tomorrow and, and move forward. So get ready for the journey. Number three, it's going to take work, get tough, get used to it, but you can do this. You are tough enough to do this. Um, the Lord would not have called you to this if he didn't believe you were tough enough to it. And he would not have given us the Holy Spirit if he didn't think we needed it. So definitely ask for the comforter, the counselor, the strengthener, all that the Holy Spirit is and promised to us. Ask for that um, impartation into our lives to help us accomplish this call that we have. We, um, we don't know the extent of what, what lives your children are going to, to touch. And as I begin to see the first generation of homeschoolers and the second generation, of as I begin to see them actually step into culture, they're, they're beginning to make ripples. And as they make these ripples, they're going to impact nations. Your kids are going to impact nations. What you're doing today matters. It's important. We need you to be engaged in this battle. We need you to be um, committed to this. And, and I applaud you for this because you are making a difference, not just in the life of your family and your grandchildren, but actually in all of culture. So please stay with it. Number four, trust us. Trust, trust those who, who have gone before and experienced the blessing of the struggle of homeschooling to know that, um, that this works, that there's a blessing in it. I, at Masterbooks, we try really hard to identify the struggles that you're gonna have. We want daily schedules so that when life falls apart, you have something to work with. We wanna make sure that we remove as many friction points as we can in the curriculum. And we're always learning about that. So sometimes with master books, people will be like, oh, I'm so disappointed because I see an error or I'm so disappointed because you guys are talking about changes. Yet we're changing all the time because we're identifying in the market. We're identifying from this conversation um, areas that we can make your life easier. And so that's something that we're always trying to do is to refine our product, make it so that we come alongside you in this because we are so committed to what God has called you to that we will do whatever it takes to give you tools and resources to help you do that. And, and may I say, I'm really excited about some of the resources that are coming out, like the logic book, the civics course, the Bible curriculum. They're very, I'm going to use the word purpose driven, but they're very intentional in helping you prepare your kids for the mission and the calling that God has on their life. So trust the fact that everything you're doing today matters and, and don't give up. We had a family in our life many years ago, and they, they had come to the place where they felt that it was time to put their kids into public school, and um, the kids wanted to play sports, and they were just tired. They were tired of doing math at the table all day and, and whatnot, and I just, I, I, I felt really strong that I was going to overstep some bounds, but I was going to ask them not to give up, to stay the course, to do what God had called them to do, and that it was with purpose and with intent. Well, they've all their kids are grown. They are serving the Lord. They're a remarkable family. And I just, um, I want that for your family as well today. I don't want you to get caught up in the battle or caught up in the fact that you took a punch or your kid is going through a hormone change or or, or your, your husband is going through hormone changes, whatever. Um, I want you to stay focused on the fact that what you're doing matters. God has called you. He is, he is able to and will equip you, um, but it's going to be a journey. It's going to be a struggle. But you know what? That struggle on the other side of it, there's a blessing. And, and now as an adult um, who has been able to homeschool my kids, um, I get many times to hold up the championship belt and say, yes, yes, I am so happy. God called me to this. He spared me from the pain that I've had to watch other families go through and I get to watch my kids um, rise up and bring glory and honor to the Lord and to advance his kingdom. So I hope this is an encouragement to you because we do want you to be encouraged and um, we, we just pray the Lord's blessing on what you're doing. And as we go into the holidays, we're doing this Thanksgiving um, exercise 
a lot of times an attitude of gratitude really helps move us from a place of self-pity and doubt to a place of, wow, God, thank you for giving us the opportunity and giving me groups of people that support me, for giving me all the challenges that I have so that I can be a stronger person and, and become who you're creating and preparing me for, for eternal purposes. Um, so we really are encouraging you as a family to also embrace the Thanksgiving um, the exercise of three things each day that we can be thankful for. And, and I tell you, I have so many that three is, three is a small number to have to try to think about. So definitely encourage you there. Uh, next week on Friday, right? Thanksgiving is next week. No, it's not. Okay. I got one more week, but the week after Friday, the the day after the good, the, the Black Friday, right? Friday after Thanksgiving, there is going to be a, uh, we do an annual flash sale where we discount a number of items on the site and it's a great time to, it's a, a one day only type limited number um, event, but um this year we're gonna we'll, we'll have a large flash sale as well on Friday. Then there will be one other event that's announced in the beginning of December. So um, prepare for the flash sale on Black Friday if you're looking to pick up some great gifts for family, uh, nieces, nephews, um, uh, apologetic biblical resource type stuff that you can give. Um, you should be able to get some really good prices from MasterBooks.com on that. All right. Well, I pray God's blessing on you. I pray you have a fantastic weekend. I do pray that the Lord encourages you and strengthens you in a special way today. And I pray that, that he does it through this message as well, because everything you're doing um, is valuable. And um, we just can't emphasize that enough. All right. Well, know that we're praying for you. Know that this group, the moderators and everybody in this group um, <clears throat> is, is praying for you and for your success and for the success of your children. And when we see the praise reports, we see the wins, we win. And so please don't stop letting us know uh, these testimonies of what God is doing in your family to encourage and strengthen faith, to encourage and strengthen ability to communicate, to discern truth, um, and to come up with big ideas that are going to change the world. All right. Bless you guys. Thank you for participating. I'm going to go through the comments and, and I'll make sure that I, I also, um, if there were any questions or whatnot, that I, I go through and answer those. And um, you just all have a fantastic day. Okay. God bless.